started the nonprofit Mars Brewer about three years ago. The impetus behind that was that um, being a cop around you can't arrest people in sobriety. Um, just like whoever one of the speakers was earlier, I realized that nobody wakes up and just says, you know what, I want to be a heroin addicted prostitute. Started so talking to people and learning their stories, realizing that a lot of people have a lot of stories about how they got to where they are. Um, so I want to start something big, start with something within the community. Um, initially, it was wanting to get a um, drug treatment center that was uh, based on a year-long residential Christian-based program. Um, saw the interwoven mills and had a vision of something bigger than that, a community center. Um, so Mars Burger New started with the goal of getting a community center, which would have a drug treatment center, a uh, business development center for like small businesses, entrepreneurs, and stuff like that, and a social center where we could coordinate and collaborate with different resources within the community. Um, since then, the last three years, we've been um, holding different events. We've had stuff like um, forums, like public panel forums on addictions. We've had them on race and social economic statuses. Um, we've had them on uh, we've had a 5K, we've had three block parties each year. Well, each year we've had a block party. Um, just different things is trying to get into the, in the community and do something. Our vision is uh, enriching the community by enriching each individual. So basically what I want to do is find people where they are, no matter where they are, and give them opportunity to be better. Um, our, the main focus of our mission is modeling, modeling the love of Jesus Christ. So we're definitely, it's all about Christ. Um, started October 2015. And um, kind of been growing since then. Um, in that time, we've been networking with other different community uh, resources, community organizations, uh, like Carolyn's is there with the Community Alternatives of Violence. Um, dealt with uh, Cosmic Potter Davis, we work with her with the Good Samaritan Faith Community, um, or Faith Clinic, Free Clinic, Good Samaritan Free Clinic. And there's the Faith uh, Community <coughs> Coalition for Homeless with her and Marie Keegan. So different ways of reaching out to people and saying, hey, how can we help, what can we do? Um, how do we connect? It's, it's all about connection. It's, it's pretty much the heart of what we're new. Um, there's all organizations with nobody's talking to each other. Nobody knows what everybody's doing is, is one of the issues. Uh, at this point, actually, we might be taking a hiatus, um, taking a step back uh, at the beginning of the end of this year, beginning of next year, to find out where God's really leading us. Um, like I said, the main drive behind March we're new was to get a drug treatment facility. Well, Dr. Hartens has actually accomplished that. He's got that, uh, the grant, the Ryan Brown Act grant. Um, he's gonna be establishing Mountain Air Behavioral Health. So um, I think what we might actually be doing is taking more of a support role, uh, using the networking and connections we've had to kind of build into what Dr. Hartz has. Um, I commend him on that. Uh, he actually spoke with me, Nick Robinson, and um, Pastor Mark from IBC. Um, his whole thing was he's got this, but he doesn't want to be just him. Too many issues we have, and especially in the Eastern Panel, just across the nation, is somebody wants to start something, they want their name branded on it, or they want their organization branded on it, they want to be a hero. A lot of pride, even in Christian organizations, unfortunately. Um, but Dr. Hart said, hey, I can't do this alone. Like he said, we've had this, this vacuum within the community in the last three years I've been working with addictions that we don't have that drug treatment center, especially Christian-based one. Um, so with that vacuum filled, that's the hub. So with all these folks, we can start making those connections to do more of the wraparound services. Um, if somebody's having an issue with domestic violence, we can get Carolyn Zazera in there with her organization to start helping these people rehabilitate in that manner. Um, when they get out, we can use um, Marie Keegan's and um, you know, uh, Cosby Potter Davis to hopefully um, help them find housing. You know, just different resources that, you know, this can be the, the, the catalyst behind it and the spokes are already there, so people can actually start feeding into that. Um, so I wholeheartedly, you know, believe in what Dr. Hardens is doing and encourage the others, especially the faith community, to go ahead and, and feed into that as well to make sure that we get this going and um, not worry about whose doctrines on what or whatever the case may be. Um, I was also asked to speak about Marchburg Initiative, which is the initiative started by Chief Mort Richards with the Marchburg Police Department. Um, the basis behind that is it's police partner with the community. It's your old adage of it takes a village to raise a, a child. Um, so what it is is using the adverse childhood experiences, the ACEs, using that to find out kids that are at risk and then trying to parent or partner them with uh, community mentors, maybe business owners, other police officers, stuff of that nature. Um, so it's mentoring the at-risk children in hopes that it would sway them from going down that path. 
So in a nutshell, that's what a Marx coordination <coughs> is. Um, the next part is, is that, that I want to speak on is what I believe the church's role is in, in all of this. The church being the Christian body, not the denomination you are. Um, so we might have a little bit of church up in here. So the, the issue I have is, is within a community I've noticed for ever since I was coming up in different communities, um, is that there's denominational walls. Is that what you have is one church of this faith doesn't want to reach out to this church of this. I mean, Pastor, or, uh, yeah, Reverend Unger even said that within his own church communities, he's had three communities, and they're all different denominations, but they still don't want to cross over. Because heaven forbid you worship the same God in a different building or under a different pastor. Um, so biblically, I want to actually express <coughs> what the Bible says about this and, and encourage us that we need, to, we need unity in the church because without that, you, you don't have a body of Christ. You have some kind of dismembered Frankenstein where you know, somebody's kind of an arm, somebody's kind of a leg, but we're not working in unison. There's too much, well, you're holding this, so I don't want to go over there. Um, and biblically, in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, 17, it, it tells us that the bread that we break is it not sharing the body of Christ. Because here is one bread. We who are many are one body, for all of us share that one bread. So if we're all doing communion in the same manner, I mean, why don't we worship the same God under the same roof? You know, why do we have to be so divisive every Sunday, every Wednesday night, every Sunday night? Um, and, and that's a big, that's a big issue. Uh, Paul also tells us in Romans 5, 15, 5, 6, Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement allow you to live in harmony with one another, according to the command of Christ Jesus, so that you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with a united mind and voice. Um, it, Paul tells right there in the early church, we, you have to be united. We have to be united. We have to be the united body of Christ. We can't just kind of do it on our own. Um, he also tells us in Romans 2.24, the big issue with us not being unified is that for as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. We're the ones that are pushing away a lot of people who don't have faith. Because they look at us and they say, and I can speak from personal experience because I was saved when I was 17, and I remember looking for a church, and I was completely confused. I was, I was mystified as to why you had Lutherans, and you had Episcopalians, and Protestants, and Baptists, and non-denominational, and charismatic. And, uh, I mean, when it gets to it, it's just confusing. So a lot of people say, well, if you're so divided, why do I want a part of that? If you speak of all loving, all knowing God, why do I want to jump in that faith? Um, denominations have their place for methodology. It's not about doctrine. The vast majority of doctrines are all the same. Um, you know, no, nobody's, you know, Donatists is from way back when and think that Christ was created material. Uh, you know, we're not, you know, from some of the early church fathers where they were really fighting with, okay, these are some real serious issues because you don't know the, the true doctrine, you don't know the true faith, you don't know what God meant by this. We essentially all believe the same thing, it's just methodology is what it comes right down to it, is that you might want to worship in one fashion, but it doesn't make it unable to worship somebody else. Somebody might not like music, somebody might like guitars, but you can still worship together in one manner. It's all methodology. Um, so that's the problem, is that we, we got to look at that from the outside. If we're supposed to be coming out to people and we're supposed to be sharing Christ, if we're supposed to be sharing the gospel, but we don't look unified ourselves. I mean, they might have a Baptist show up their one, to the door one day, and then they have I know, a, Protestant, or a Pentecostal show up to the door the next, and they're like, well, if you two were at my door at the same time, you know, what why aren't you kind of working together? You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's, there's this division, and, and it, it hurts the body of Christ. It hurts the way we're perceived by people on the outside. Um, the one um, early uh, quote that I like that people, they, they think that Augustine wrote it, but it really is after that from a Reformed church, but it's essentially unity, it, or I'm sorry, in essentials unity, and not essentials liberty, in all things grace. So it's very talk, pretty much talk about the faith. Hey, in essential things, there's unity. Okay, we believe in the Trinity. We believe that Christ was risen from the dead. We believe in redemption and salvation through Christ. We believe in um, him being the only way. Um, and then you have non-essential liberty. Some people don't like dancing. Some people don't like alcohol. Whatever that, that essential that issue is, is liberty. It's, it's, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect your faith. And then in all things grace, we just need to extend grace to everyone. Um, and finally, uh, Romans 14.1 tells us to accept anyone who is weak in faith, but don't argue about doubtful issues. So again, it's just all about the, we got to look at the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is sin. And the only way we can get away from sin is through the blood of Jesus Christ and through salvation through him. So if we're all believing that, if we're all worshiping that, 
we need to work together, especially in this issue with, with the opioid and opiate uh, epidemic, is that it is a sin issue. A lot of it is very much a sin issue. Uh, a lot of it is a brain chemical issue, but that's affected once the sin issue has already been established. I'm not saying that you just, you know, save from price and all of a sudden you're not going to be an addict anymore. Um, there's scientific research that shows that the actual brain chemistry changes, but the brain chemistry didn't change until you started using it. Um, so, as, as a church, I think it's important that we have to find that, that, common, that commonality, common unity for the community. And at this point, I think one of the most um, detrimental issues we have at this point is, is the opioid epidemic. And I think one of the things we can all rally around is that the fact that we now have a um, drug treatment center that's got a Christian running it. So I encourage the churches to at least look at that and say, hey, we can feed into this and then at that at that point, find commonality. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's about all I got. Um, Can you I say your thank, name again? What's that? Can you say your name again? Um, Andrew Garcia. Thank you. Um, I'm going to thank Lisa for setting this all up. She did a fantastic job. Also, I want to thank everybody who came here and, and was sharing. And I want to remind you all that there's a box over there for a love offering for uh, the people who are for Mike Kincaid. And, um, yeah, Denny, uh, Denny. Figgins, yeah, I'm sorry, Danny Figgins. There's a love offering for them. Um, please, if you have a dollar or two, just throw it in there. Show uh, they came here, they're taking their time. This is kind of.